that's, I just think this is brilliant. I really do. And uh, I love that. It, <laughs> I love that it's outside of a Christian construct, first of all, because I read that. I kiss dating goodbye book. I'm dating Jesus book, all that kind of stuff. And it really screwed me up. Welcome. Right. Girl, I feel like I know you already. I feel the same about you. And can I tell you a funny story? Yes. So I don't know if you've seen any of my TikToks, but, uh, you know, I used to be a pastor. And so I'm a little, um, I'm very church shy. Like I don't, anyway, I have some trauma with that. And so when I, and rules shy because I felt so oppressed by all the rules. And when I first saw you on TikTok, I, I was like, oh my gosh, she's so classy. She's so demure. She's so well-spoken. You just, you hold yourself so well. And then you have these rules. So I thought, oh my God, it's, 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 she's a Christian woman, like trying to push her. And it wasn't until I heard you say that you were a stripper for 20 years. I was like, that's my girl. <laughs> that is my girl. So anyway, I'm just so excited to learn from you. Yay. It's kind of, so, finally. Finally, I know. And it really took a lot of me like recognizing my part to play in failed relationships, my codependency and well, and these men um, are just showing not all men, but the men that I've been seeing have truly been showing me their character lately and what is they're really interested in. So I think what you have going is a good thing. And of course, I'm going to read your books. I couldn't find them on Audible. Oh, no, they're not. Because Audible is an author pimp. And like a pimp, they sell the product, but keep the money. Oh, okay. So uh, I guess I have to just buy the book and read it. <laughs> you, want, you want no more assholes and no more assholes is an audiobook. And I do sell the audiobook through the link chain in my bio. Okay. You sell the audiobook. Ooh, girl. And I narrate it. All right. Okay. So Holly, so let me, by the way, I'm live streaming right now. Not that I'm actually paying attention. Oh, wonderful. Because I told them, I said, this is a coaching session. So in a coaching session, this is for me, this is a formal coaching session, by the way. And this is what I put on the table because you came across my for you page and it was about the time of QT guy. Like it was right, right, right before QT guy. And you're talking about dating, talking about apps, that kind of stuff. Right. And then you met QT guy. And, and I think I chimed in at that point. And that's when I said, Ooh, maybe you want to use that. No kissing for three months dating role. And you were like, yeah, yeah. So, um, yes. Yeah, so, and then there was something else that I saw and I did another comment about the no kissing for three months dating role. And that was it. And I just left it that. And then I saw my people who were like, you should check out Canada's dating coach because it didn't work with Q QT guy. And then you met up with your ex and it didn't work there. And I'm just like, you listen, I, I DM'd you. I put the offer on the table. I said, I'd, I would work for you for free because there was something when I first saw you and I felt this connection with you. And I was like, you know what? Like, let's see. Right. <clears throat> so I DM'd you and I made that offer and you're like, eh, okay. Right. And that was it. And we left it there. And you reached out to me this week and you're like, you know, maybe I want to try that and, you know, try your offer for coaching. So for me, yeah. this is coaching sessions and we're doing it the way that I do coaching. But the difference is usually when I start coaching with somebody, I don't have any background on them. And I'm starting with a really super mm -hmm. fresh approach. I'm still starting fresh with you because I like to start off from a place of like ignorance. I like to okay. start saying, what do you want me to do for you. So let's let's start this session this way. The way I normally start with people, what would you like me to help you with today? So what I'm finding is I'm 
I've been stalking you lately and uh, listening through all of your things. And it it's finally like ringing true to me. I, I do have this, this thing inside of me that is anti-rules. And it's from years of abuse in the church. And so I'm, I have kind of a rebellious spirit. Uh, I, I, so I struggle with the rules thing. Uh, but you're right. I'm seeing the rules are necessary. I'm starting, I've been starting to use them and they're working. Tell me more. Well, I don't know if you saw that uh, a gentleman had reached out uh, kind of long distance and wanted to uh, get to know me. And I said, sure, I'm willing to carve out some time to see if we can develop a friendship first, and then we'll see where it goes. And uh, in one of our conversations, he had, we were FaceTiming and he said, how crude, how crude can I be here with you? <laughs> oh, listen, I was a stripper for 20 years. I've seen okay. it all. I've said it all. I say dump the motherfucker all the time. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're sitting there FaceTiming and he was like, oh my God, we're not even talking about sex because we're not even dating. And he's like, oh my gosh, I have to, um, you have to see, like, I'm looking at you and you have to see what you're doing to me right now. Can I show you? And I was like, no, don't show me any of that. We're, we're not there yet. Besides, uh, when I want to see the package, I will open the package myself. I don't want you to ruin the prize. What's the point in sending me a picture of a toy I can't play with? You know, like, I made it very clear. I do not want any pics like that. Yeah. And the next week we were texting and I was telling him how, you know, I'd had a sad day. I was emotional and crying. And he says, uh, well, maybe this will make you smile. And he sends me a video of his erect. Yes. Pecker. And immediately I thought about you <laughs> and I thought, oh my gosh, he is doing, he's trying to jump all the steps because that's really what's just important to him is the physical. And it's not important to him to get to know the other areas of me, which are, look, I have an extremely high sex drive. That, so that's probably what I need the most help with. Okay. I see, I told the guy right away, like you have disrespected me, you've crossed my boundary. And so therefore, goodbye, good luck with your life. Yeah. So I am getting better at that. So I guess my biggest issue is how do I'm I'm like a I'm a morning and evening sex girl. Yes. Like uh I am very physical and so I don't know how the only relationship that I have never been that way with was my husband and my first husband was an arranged marriage through my church uh through a prophet so we didn't kiss until we got engaged and we didn't have sex until our wedding night so <laughs> and that was a bad idea right uh obviously it was a bad idea to marry somebody that I wasn't in love with and that a prophet told me that I had to marry. So I'm struggling. Him and I were not compatible right. sexually for 20 years. And it was a, a hole missing yeah. inside of me yeah. or a hole not getting filled. <laughs> yeah. So my question for you is how does, someone with such a high drive do that yes how do i not kiss for three months and not have sex for three months i know that sounds like you're about to talk to a man but no listen holly do you know anything about horoscopes about the signs not a ton if i said i'm a scorpio does that mean anything to you 
Uh, no. We are the sexual powerhouses of the oh. astrological signs. Okay, girl. Okay. Sexual powerhouse. I sold sexuality for 20 years. You sure life. did. You sure did. Uh, I've been to swingers clubs. I've been to hedonism in Jamaica. I've had threesomes and moresomes. My body count, I don't even know. Do you know why? I never bother keeping count because sometimes it was right. night. Yes. I had my fun. You sure did. So when it comes to using, you know, kissing for three months dating role, when there's someone in front of you that you find attractive and they're taking off all those boxes, kind, generous, thoughtful, gentle, respectful, and you're slow dancing in your kitchen, which I did with this particular man I'm thinking about, you do move in for the kiss because it's so natural. It is habit. Here's what I did. Oops. Turn my head at the last second. Oops. Oh, it's not the date. Impulse control. Who controls my body, me or someone else? Yeah. Well, I struggle with impulse control. Well, then you uh, have people who struggle with impulse control because like attracts like. Are you tired? Uh, of okay. Are you tired of guys who don't have impulse control? Yes. The one who said you were overweight, that ex, are you tired of guys who lack impulse control? Yes. Exactly. So how do you get somebody who has impulse control if you refuse to practice impulse control? Okay. So this is something I have to really work on. I mean, uh, see. The very first thing I teach is meditation. It shrinks your amygdala, which is stress, fear, and anxiety. Often impulsivity is a reaction to stress, fear, or anxiety. If I don't do this move right now, I might not get an opportunity to satisfy myself later. Oh. Anxiety. Let me ask you this. When you're not in a relationship with somebody, what do you do with your sex drive? Man I masturbate. Exactly. Yes. You continue doing that. It's just, I'm not going to get invested with the wrong person. If you kiss and have sex and reject other people for the benefit of this one, all of these behaviors tell your brain, I selected the right mate. Because you were mm -hmm. in mate selection mode when you chose those behaviors versus hookup mode. If you're here today, gone tomorrow, you're in discard mode, meaning you don't keep them, meaning they don't stay, meaning they don't affect you. But when you're in relationship mode and you kiss and have sex and you keep and you reject for that person, you signal to your brain that you've concluded a vetting process and it shuts down your red flag alert. And now with the amount of sex that you're having, that movement in the birth canal, Holly, you have babies, right? Yes, I have four. You know that the movement in the birth canal when you give birth releases a ton of oxytocin in your body, right? Yeah. The movement in the birth canal is still movement in the birth canal. Your body is releasing an excess of oxytocin. And when you add the KISS chemical, which is an amphetamine aphrodisiac antidepressant, on top of all of that, you put yourself in an altered state where you miss the bullshit for too long, develop emotions for the bullshit person, and then stay too long trying to change their bullshit behaviors because you're told fighting is normal, fighting is healthy, and you're yes. fighting over the bullshit behavior. So let's save ourselves the grief. Let's continue to masturbate till we meet the right person. Let's move our head to the side before we plant that kiss on their lips and make sure they're the right person before we have another mistake. Yes. So my takeaway is <laughs> if I want them to control their impulses, I need to control mine. Number one relationship rule. It's not fair to ask for anything you're not willing to do first. Right. I really, you know what it is? I'm just a brat. Yeah. I love being, I love being a tease as well. And so I want to be able to tease and flirt and be sexy and him control himself. <laughs> So listen, I met my husband in a strip club. He Gosh. was my client for two years. I get to be a tease. I get to do whatever I want to do. My husband yes. trusts me. 
Like, listen, I'm 50 years old. I still go out to bars. I still go dance all night long with my friends. I say to my husband, I'll see you when I get home because he doesn't do that. He's not a partier. So I'll mm -hmm. literally be gone for days at a time sometimes because I'm I'm off on a two day trip in Toronto going to this club and that club and that club. because I got three friends that are DJs. And I'll say, I'll see you when I get home. And he knows I'm going to look cute. He knows I'm going to be on a dance floor. He knows guys are going to be rubbing up on me. But he also knows that I'm going to say, hey, you can look, but you can't touch. Mm. You have very good boundaries. You do. Okay, can I, let me ask you another question that I get a lot mm -hmm. as uh, someone who talks about relationships on TikTok. When I talk to the, about Look, women want to feel safe. We we need to know that you're safe before we give you, you know, our physical body. Um, the men are like, okay, great. Yes, we understand that that's what you want. Mm -hmm. But how do we satisfy what we want? Yeah. Which is, so who gets their way? So what do what they would you when they, when they say, what about satisfying what I want? So what is it specifically that they want that they want satisfied? They want to be able to kiss or maybe have sex to know if that they're afraid they're going to get three months in and there's not going to be any chemistry or connection. So first of all, if the initial chemistry died off, it's a good thing you didn't kiss him. It was fake. Um, it's a good thing you didn't kiss him because it was fake chemistry. It was nothing more than a procreation drive. And when you saw that they were lazy, selfish, irresponsible, you, you lost your, your heart on for them and you're desire for them died off. Good thing you didn't kiss them. I also, I also say good enough is good enough, right? I don't, I don't need an initial spark in order to see them again, because an initial spark is nothing more than a procreation drive and it has nothing to do with character, consistency, compatibility. But if they're, right. they're kind, they're thoughtful, they're chivalrous, they're generous. I enjoy their company. Good enough is good enough to see again. And maybe the chemistry actually happens because we connect mentally and emotionally. Now, no kissing doesn't mean no touching. It doesn't mean no affection. So over over the course of three months, I'm not occupying their mouths, meaning we're doing a lot of talking, meaning I'm getting to know who they are, meaning we're talking about sex, what I've done, what I would like to do, how frequently I like to do it, right? You are talking about it. 100%. Okay. I need to know that we're compatible. I'm also going to let them know I don't like wet and sloppy kisses. Tongue comes in after a while, but initially it needs to be sensual and soft. And I'll show you how if I have to. Okay. You're definitely having conversations about sex. Now, no kissing doesn't mean no touching, doesn't mean no affection, but we want to build something genuine. And what we're currently doing in our dating culture is going from stranger to sexuality because we're kissing people we don't know. And kissing is a sexual act because it's an aphrodisiac amphetamine and antidepressant, which is why it's kissing in sex, not holding hands in sex, not cuddling in sex. It's kissing in sex. Mm -hmm. Aphrodisiac amphetamine antidepressant. I'm not doing those drugs with a stranger, putting myself in an altered state. But if during the course of three months, the more I get to know you, the more I like you, then the more I like you, the more warm and fuzzy I feel. We call that fondness. The more fondness I feel, the more excited I feel about you, the more affection I feel. The more affection I feel, the more affection I show. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to touch. I'm going to hold your hand. I'll cuddle up against you. I'll put my arms around you. I'll come up behind you when we're standing in line, put my arms around you and put my head against your back. I'll stand mm -hmm. and put my arms. I'll just wrap my arms around you while we're waiting at the buffet lineup and just put my head against your shoulder, against your chest. I'll slow mm -hmm. dance with you in my kitchen. And when yeah. you're a bodybuilder, handles me too hard because you have big brawny hands i'll say i like to be touched more gently more softly more essentially and you'll go oh i'm gonna apply what i just learned and so here's a man who spent three months listening to what you like applying that information to see pleasure on your face what's going to happen when you direct him in the bedroom don't listen the same thing yeah yeah that is good so let me ask you this. Do you believe that people cannot have chemistry at first and then it grow? Oh, baby girl, this is my story. My husband came to me, came to the club. He's just like Joe Schmo, whatever, whatever, right? 
And I, did, I didn't think anything of him. And then he came back. I didn't think anything of him. And then he started coming back, coming back, coming back, coming back. Wednesday nights, my love, for two years, I got to know him. The more I got to know him, the more I liked him. The more I liked him, the more affection I felt. The more affection I felt, the more affection I showed. It blew up one day when it, like the VIP was like over there. And he would come in and I'd be like, yeah, let's go. This time I said, you know the way you go ahead. And I followed him. And let me tell you, he was kind, thoughtful, generous, consistent, intelligent, respectful, always loved the way he touched mm, good fingers. And, you know, so like just nice, just everything was nice. He's so nice, such a nice guy. Girl, yes. I saw him walk and I saw confidence. And that oh. was something I never thought of because he was always just so respectful yes oh oh i saw the plant and the step and the way he just owned his space without crying that he just is oh whoosh you know what i'm saying yes whoosh for sure game over i've been infatuated with him for 17 years I make out with him every single day. Last time I made out with him was two day this morning. That's so good. Yeah. I also believe that with two willing partners, you can definitely like have, like, you know, about tantric sex. Yes. I mean, I, I think have, with two, this, this, this man, this man who waited two years to kiss me, I'm 50. Jeez. We met in my 30s. My body count was accumulated before him. So, well, I had I have some since him. It's, it's girls. So, you know, oh yeah. Good. Oh, I used I used to be bisexual. Now I'm just sexually lazy. But um <laughs> so this is the first, the first person in my life who made love to me. Mm. You want tantric, you want connected Yes. for the one who connects with you. The ones who are yes. like, this is a few months, that's, in, that's insane. That's reasonable. Nobody. What they're saying is I'm looking to connect with the body. I don't care about the person. Yes. Yeah. I definitely want to connect with the person. The body is just, it's the body is great, but it is the cherry on top, but the body's just going to keep crumbling <laughs> with age and you got to have something else, friend. You got to have something else. Okay. So, you know, I think, so when you say three months, mm -hmm. do you take into consideration um, like, if you had a date every single night for like three weeks, like a certain, like hours. No. Okay. So tell me about that. Okay. So only time tells agree or disagree. Yes. Agree. Because time will tell if your initial impression is the truth about who they are. Um. And so being on good behavior, a good facade for three weeks or a month or two months is easy. You're right. You're right. You're so smart. I so smart. It. I love it. I've definitely experienced that before. Okay. So three months. Now, once you kiss, you can go all the way. Alley -oop, whatever you want. Um, oh, whatever you want. I had a couple. It was so cute. They went back to the place where they had their first date to go have their first kiss, went back to her place, didn't leave for a week. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Just, yes. Just rip, rip his clothes off, girl. Okay, good. And then, and so for three months, so the, let's talk a little bit more about the exclusivity part. Yes. So you say that, so basically you're just friends We're talking. for three months. 
here's the thing. People who say you mean just friends, my answer to that is I don't know if you're capable of being my friend. And I need to find that out before we kiss. Okay. And so you're just going to treat them. (laughs) That's a, that's a challenging one, I think for society, because we're not just friends with the opposite sex generally. Unless they're married couples, you know, I'm just friends with, with males because uh, when it comes to, you know, genders in a species, genders are very capable of being in the same room and not fornicating. So, because if that wasn't true, there would be squirrels having sex by the side of the road. Like you look out your window right now and see squirrels having sex. Yes. So genders, let's see. It's pretty pretty likely. Pretty likely on my farm. Right. But not all the time. Right. Yeah. Because we are capable of being in each other's presence and not be fornicating. So there's, there's that aspect of it is, are you even capable of being my friend? Because the foundation of a healthy relationship is friendship. And I need to know before we kiss, if we can even be friends. Okay. So my next question is. When you're hanging out during that three month courting wooing phase, are you, are you splitting the checks? Is he paying? Like, what are your thoughts on all that? I'm not going to, I'm, I want to know who someone is. So when somebody asks you that question, well, who, who pays, who pays the right? Who pays for it? The reason why you're asking me this Holly is because for so long guys have paid for your meal And then said, the least you can do is give me a kiss. I know that you're exactly right. And so we're, and so the, the ones who immediately go to paying are the ones who are paying for services. I pay for your meal. The least you can do is give me a kiss. That's Mm -hmm. the first thing they say because they're using dating apps for services instead of professionals for services. You're right. So I say, I'm not, I'm not, I don't talk about who pays what. I just want to know who people are. And so when we say that, there are men, Holly, and you've come across them. There are men who insist on paying, not because they're trying to coerce or manipulate you, but because they feel better that way, right? Yes. So I don't want to take that away from them. Sure. I'm going to make the first two dates inexpensive. I'm going to make them a beverage and a walk. So I'm going to meet at a coffee shop or a smoothie or whatever place, bubble tea. And right. And I'm going to grab a beverage. I'm going to pick a funky neighborhood and we're going to walk around. And because I like that, because it's a cool environment, because it's quick and moving, it enhances the conversation. And because it's inexpensive, if I pay for me, that's $4. If he pays for the both of us, because he's that kind of man, it cost him $8. Now, if I say, I don't want to see you again, neither of us have made a big financial investment just to say or hear those words. Yes. Yeah, that's true. I make the first two a vibe check inexpensive beverage and a walk because you're like this and not like this. You're not interviewing, which means you're more comfortable. You're in yes. body language, which means they get into themselves faster and you want people to get comfortable faster. If he says, I, I want to take you out for a meal for lunch. So that sounds really nice. Let's save this for a little bit further down the road. How about we meet at this coffee shop in this neighborhood and we just take a little walk first. Hmm. Yeah. I like that. Okay, so as yeah, I don't want him to pay if he's expecting exactly. Yeah, expecting something. It's such a turn off. I'm not a prostitute, dude. Yeah. If I was, it would be more cheap, expensive than a freaking meal. At least a thousand bucks an hour. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about you. Oh go ahead. What? about exclusivity for a second okay uh, yes how do you what before we do that how do you um i don't know exactly like i would love an elevator speech yes. on what to say because i feel like maybe it's because i'm not comfortable using the word rules yes yeah i get nervous fumbling it all out yes. how would you say it Uh, Like, this is what my kind of standards are. Yeah. 
And you do want to make sure that you have no more assholes, by the way, because the script, uh, yes. like I, I completely, I walk you through the process, not only of using the no kissing for three months data rule, but how you are preparing yourself for this relationship, because you understand that the guys who practice patience and impulse control and are not lying about wanting a long-term relationship and genuinely want to know who you are. It's not these ones, it's these ones, right? Yes. Which means you need to come up here as well with your confidence and your self-esteem. So I prepare you to come up here so that you can pick up and continue on from here when you meet this person. I want to talk about exclusivity and then give you the script. Okay. Exclusivity part, you're going to meet people who are, because the other dating methodology is where a woman gives her body and exclusivity to a stranger and hopes for the best. And this benefits selfish short-term thinkers because they get access to your vajayjaya and not worry about other people having access to your vajayjaya. So it's no competition, but I haven't earned no competition. And that's the point that we're making is Mm -hmm. when somebody says like, like you're going to say to them, basically what you do is you, you lay out your goal and your plan. My goal is a committed long-term relationship because I want to get married, have a kid, buy a house one day. Holly, I know for you, that's going to be different. You don't want kids, right? You probably don't want to have more. No more. But I do want, you know, the kids are going to be out in a few years and I want a companion. Yes. So do you want to get married or is that not, not marriage, but companionship? Doesn't matter. Okay. So no yearning, you're easy breezy. Yeah. I, the whole having to get married thing is just not necessarily as, as long as we have a commitment to one another. Okay. So you're going to say, you know, I really just want to be clear. I'm really intent on getting into a committed long-term relationship because I'm looking for the last relationship I'm going to choose. The one I'm going to stay in my forever. Yes. And yes. I'm going to, to build a life together. And my my plan for choosing that person and making sure I choose the right person is using a no kissing for three months dating rules. So no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers, no exclusivity. Um, I'm really going to be talking to people until I meet the right one. And then when I meet the right person, then we start a relationship. But I'm not going to start a relationship with a stranger and then work backwards trying to figure out whether or not that person was the right decision or not. I really do want to choose a partner using uh, knowledge and insight and make sure I understand who they are. And we understand that we're a good fit before we start that relationship. Okay. Okay. You're going to get them saying no exclusivity, right? Right. Yeah. Exclusivity Because they're used to the status quo, which is is on the first, second, third, fourth date. And you give them exclusivity because of that kiss. And so what you say to them and when they go no exclusivity, like Holly, you're him and I'm you. Okay. So go ahead. Uh, I mean, like, I already know I like you. You you like me, this is how I foresee it happening. Uh, so I want to be exclusive with you like now. So why can't we do that now? I understand that, but I don't know you yet. So I don't know if you're right or wrong, but let me ask you this question. Why should I give exclusivity to the wrong person? Well, I'm not the wrong person. Okay. I n- know in the in my core that you're the woman for me. And so what you're saying is I should trust you already. Over you, over yourself. That's, that's, right? you're still him. So what, oh, yes. what you're saying um, is I should trust you already. Yeah. Do you, you can't like look at me and see that. How do you not see that I'm a trustworthy person? Okay, fair enough. Now it goes both ways, right? If I should trust you so deeply already, you trust me so deeply already, don't you? Yes. So I would like uh, $10,000. I'll I'll pay you back, trust me. But you trust me enough to hand me $10,000 today, right? It's not too early, right? Uh, I mean, we really, don't you? Can't you see how trustworthy I am? You're exactly right. Yeah. Touche. 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 So it takes yes. it takes time. 
to know who someone is. So I'm taking my time. Okay, that's a really good one. I like that. Okay, so during the friend stage, that also means there's no, you're not meeting each other's friends. Oh, yes, you are. Yes. Oh, you are. Okay. Yes, because there's no hoping games. And so I love that you're a hope with Holly because this is so perfect. So yeah. what we're doing is we're shifting away from hoping and we're coming into knowledge and insight, selecting based on knowledge and insight. So I'm not going to kiss and have sex and hope I meet your people. Hope I meet your kids. Hope we develop a friendship. Hope you want to commit to me. Hope this is going to work out and we're actually compatible. So there's no hoping. If it's not there, we don't proceed. So if we get two and a half months in and I say, how come I haven't met your kids yet? And you say, oh, it's too early. I'm not comfortable. I say, take your time. I just want you to understand I'm not kissing somebody who's not comfortable with me. You do meet their people. The kids, the kids that happens in a neutral way on neutral territory before commitment yeah. is made, because what you don't want to do is commit to a relationship and find out you don't get along with their kids or they don't right. get along with you or your kids don't like them. So the introduction is in a neutral way on neutral territory. Hey kids, we're going to this a museum. We're going to this event. My friend Don's going to be there. He's bringing his kids. Neutral way, neutral ter territory. The way you, you address them is in a neutral way. Treat them like your friend Nancy. Don't treat them like a romantic interest because the kids pick up on that and just let them feel like this is a friend and let them interact and if they don't get along don't kiss that person but yeah you, i think when you this meet is... your friends examine who they surround themselves with if it's bros and schmoes don't kiss that person because like attracts like if it's solid couples in healthy happy relationships that's a good sign and you, they meet your people because your people are an extra set of eyes they're going to see red yes. flags that you may be missing Definitely. Okay. That's, I just think this is brilliant. I really do. And I love that. It, I love that it's outside of a Christian construct. First of all, cause I read that I kiss dating goodbye book. I'm dating Jesus book, all that kind of stuff. And it really screwed me up, but this is good. I'm, I'm so nervous that I'm not going to be able to control myself, but I have to keep my eye on the prize. Yes. Like, do you have so, like a mantra that you say constantly? Well, meditation, like, meditation calms your mind and emotions because yeah. it shrinks the part of your brain that, that produces stress, fear, and anxiety. But Holly, have you ever been at an event somewhere out and about in public and you got really horny. He, has that ever happened? Yes. Did you just immediately drop your pants and pleasure yourself? No. No. Because you have impulse control. Because I do. I can control my impulses. You have control over your own body. Don't rule number one. Don't talk about yourself as though you have no control. You yeah. know as well as I do. What you see, you project. What you project, you create. You're right. You're exactly right. I can control my impulses. So, uh, per, honestly, I feel like I won't be able to do that if we're, like, alone in a house together. Then don't be. So, this is what no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers. Right. There's a reason why I say no sleepovers. Because you, when you have a sleepover, you make it more difficult to not yeah. fall through. So no sleepovers puts you in the position of saying, you have to go now. Because you set that boundary. You told them in the beginning, no sleepovers. And let me tell you, a lot of them are going to try. You're going to watch a movie. It'll be midnight. They'll be like, oh, can I just sleep over? You'll be like, no, motherfucker, go home. Yes. No, no, you have to. And honestly, this like being firm and concise is how you talk to men. I literally say you have to go now. I don't yes. use a million words for you have 
to go now. It's five words to communicate what takes five words to communicate. No more than that. I don't need to story tell. I don't need to pussyfoot. I'm clear and concise. Okay, it's midnight. You have to go now. Oh, you know, I had some drinks. Maybe I'm not good to drive. Get an Uber. Oh, but you know, my place is far away. Get a hotel room. I don't care what you do, but you have to go now. Yeah. So I'm probably not ready to even start dating because I struggle so much with this. I just made a video this week about how proud I was that I told somebody not to call me ever again. <laughs> that whole like Christianese, be polite, yes. be kind, extend grace has a hold on me that yes. I'm really trying to shake. Be convenient, be demure, yes. don't stand up for yourself is all bullshit we need to get rid of. Oh. We need to get rid of this bullshit. I see videos of women walking down the street saying, please stop following me. I'm like, that's not the way you do it. Stop following me is the way you do it. But we're told we shouldn't be standing up for ourselves because it's dangerous to do so. We need to change the world. We yes. need to change the world. We yes. need to change the world. I'm starting. I'm definitely making progress. But so I, I'm probably maybe I'm I just should not be dating right now. <laughs> so listen, if you think it's too I always say the first five dates in public. Hi. If you think it's too dangerous to be behind closed doors alone then don't always be yeah. friends, right? Call it chaperones for reasons. But yeah, stop talking about yourself as though you have no control. You will never be powerful if you never speak of yourself as a powerful person. And when you talk about yourself as though you can't even control your own body, Holly, I know you can. When you're in a car and it's 20 minutes to the next rest stop and you got to pee really bad, you don't pee yourself. You have right. control over your own body. Stop talking about yourself yeah. as you don't. Everything you're saying to me is what I say to men. And yet I struggle with it myself. So start with the meditation. Start yeah. with the calming. Because what, what do you think is getting in your way in terms of impulse control? What is the emotion that's getting in your way? That is a good question. For me, it is a need to be desired. Yeah. Insecurity. Yeah. That's low lying fruit. Trust me, I've been there. Right. Bartering my body to gain validation and attention. Bartering your body. <gasps> Got to write that down. It is low lying fruit. No life fruits. Damn, girl. So easy to get it that way, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I don't give it up to everyone. My body count is really low because I prefer, well, there's a lot of reasons, but I like being just monoamorous. Uh, I feel more secure in that, I guess. But then again, I haven't explored a lot. Right. So I don't really know. But what do you think about women who want to explore their sexuality? Do they just go in and, in and just are like, hey, yes, I want to have sex with you. Here are, I, I'm not. I don't want a relationship. This, this, they're just very clear with their boundaries. Know what you want, right? Yeah. So I left a three-year abusive relationship when I was 20. I spent a year just having fun. My rule is no penetration, but I was picking up guys in bars and just having fun. And if you couldn't, if you couldn't do the no penetration, I knew you were, you were a one trick pony and I wasn't interested in somebody who can be imaginative in their play. So that was me being very clear about what I wanted and how I wanted it. When I got into this relationship with my husband 17 years ago, I was still bisexual, like still very interested in, in women. And I wanted 
two relationships. I wanted a man and I wanted a woman. And I told him, I said, you'll be my only man, but I'm shopping for a woman and I'd like to have a girlfriend as well. So do you see how in each of these instances, they're very different scenarios, but I'm very clear about what it is that I want. And I let the other yeah. people make a decision about whether or not they're going to stick around. Yeah. You know, I never have a problem saying what my boundaries are and what my, what I want. I struggle with enforcing it. Yeah. I expect them to just follow along. And of course they never do. And they push my boundaries and then I have to enforce it. Now, do you enforce it? If you said, I don't want to kiss you and they move in for a kiss, do you let that kiss happen? Or do you? I have not been on enough. Yes, I will. I Yes, but the only time that that's happened, it's because I wasn't even attracted to the person. Right. I don't know what I would do if I really was attracted to them and yeah, and wanted to kiss. And so you need to, so by sticking to the three months, it doesn't matter what your level of attraction is. I, I set a boundary. And I'm see, th and here's part of it too, is do you want to look like somebody who doesn't follow through? Do you want to no. look like somebody who you say one thing, but you do something else? And so when you state that you're using a no kissing for three months, Daniel, it helps you. Our first date was February 10th, March, April, May 10th will be the date of our first kiss if we want to kiss on that date. And so by setting that date and communicating it, if you don't want to look like somebody whose word is bullshit, then you turn your head away when you move in for a kiss because you were doing it automatically. But then you say to yourself, wait a second, I don't want to be bullshit. I want to be somebody who has integrity and stands by the word. I want this man to see me as somebody whose word they can trust because I stand by the words I speak. So it helps you stay strong and convicted. So that helps you with your own behaviors because you set the standard and you don't want to look like an idiot. But if yes. they move in for a kiss, regardless of how attracted you are, you want to say to yourself, wait a second, I might find them physically attractive, but I'm still looking to make sure they have character. Yeah. And if he moves in for a kiss before that date, it shows you a lack of character. Yeah. That's very true. And if he did move in, move in for a kiss, would you just end things then? Or it's, what do you think? If if he, if I, first of all, if it was early on, if it was early on and he did that, absolutely. 100%. Yes. I don't care how fucking hot you are you think your swinging dick is going to get my attention? Hell right. no. You just show me you don't deserve me. Because one yeah. of the things that I look for is respect. Yes. Listening to what I say and caring about what I say I need. And you decided yeah. you didn't care about what I said. Your agenda was greater than mine. The consequences to me for kissing and having sex with somebody who's a selfish short-term thinker is a decline of my mental health and emotional well-being when I find out they're a liar, a cheater, lazy, selfish, irresponsible. So you don't care about you getting your rocks off, regardless of how that affects me. So absolutely block and delete. If it's like two and a half months in, and like we're we've been like, you know, affectionate and it's it's steamy, and I'm like moving in for the kiss every now and then, and whoops, reminding myself at the last second, you know, there's a moment that's kind of steamy, and he's like, I'm going to shoot my shot right now, and it's two and a half months in. I'm not going to dismiss the whole two and a half months of respect that he showed me. I'm going to understand that that was a moment that he misunderstood, but I'll be like, hey, that was offside, and you're in the penalty box for a little bit, but I'm not completely dismissing the person. I still got my eyes open, though. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line for me is I cannot ask for something I'm not. Yes. That is my big takeaway from you today as well. Like, don't let my word be bullshit. 
if I want a man of integrity and impulse control or, and to be able to control himself, then, because ultimately if he can't control himself, in my mind, you're definitely more likely to cheat. Exactly. Somebody who lacks patience, lacks impulse control, doesn't care to know who you are, doesn't care to know who you are. Because if he's going to walk away just because you're using, you know, kissing for three months data, he doesn't care to know who you are. But you didn't find yes. if you did not use a no kissing for three months dating role. So if you end up with somebody who lacks patience, lacks impulse control, doesn't want to know who you are, you have a cheater. That's the formula for a cheater. It is. And I and if and I guess if I can't control my impulses and be a woman of my word and integrity, then I could be perceived as that as well. And, but you just might not find out that you picked a cheater because you didn't practice patience and impulse control. Yeah, exactly. Holly, I want to swing back to something you said in the beginning. Okay. So you said that initially what, what kind of turned you off a little bit about the no kissing for three months dating rule is the word rule and coming mm -hmm. from that background that you did, there's a knee jerk reaction to what feels like an imposition with rules. I have rules for you. This is what you're supposed to do. I want you to redefine this. First of okay. all, under the right conditions, rules keep us safe. Rules in a religious dynamic where they're pairing young girls with old men, those rules do not keep you safe. But yes. when you're driving around on the road and it says red light stop, stop sign stop, these rules keep you from being T-boned. So under the right conditions, rules keep you safe. So my rules when I'm using a no kissing for three months dating rule, it's about my mental health, my emotional well-being, my bodily integrity. If I don't say, show me who you are before making a selection, I may end up with somebody who's a liar and a cheater and I get an STD. Yeah. I may end up with somebody who doesn't control their anger and their behaviors and I get physically abused. I may end up with somebody who is lazy, selfish, and irresponsible and cannot build a life alongside me because they don't have money. So- yeah. Rules that I have maintain my mental health and emotional well-being by keeping me from developing emotions for the wrong person. Yeah, I, I just, as you were talking about it, I think, okay, all I have to do is change the word rules to my three-month, like, standards or something like that. Exactly. And... That for some reason that just makes it more digestible for me. Just so silly how our mind we can play tricks on our mind so easily. But yeah, I think you've given me a lot to think about. That a lot of this is my issue. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. Okay. I want to give you some homework. Okay. And then I want us to do another session in a week. Are you, are Sundays your day? Uh, Sundays are good. Okay. So I want, well, it doesn't have to be Sunday, by the way. So you have the link for booking on my calendar. Okay. So I want you to find a date a week from now. I'm, I'm actually going to be partying next weekend. It's a birthday. Nice. Oh my God. It's going to be a seafood festival. Plus DJ is going to be so good. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Yes. One uh, week. So book yourself in for another session a week from today. So it's going to be going into Monday, probably. And I'm, I want you to do some homework in the meantime. So okay. first of all, I want you to write on some sticky notes. I am in control. Because your most pervasive inner dialogue is I'm not in control of myself. And yeah. it needs to change. So I want you to put this on at least six sticky notes to go on mirrors and door jams. I am in control because I want us to recondition your brain from I don't okay. myself to I am in control. Okay. I will uh, do that. I also want you to start meditating. I have a free meditation guide in the link tree in my bio. Okay. On TikTok. I make it really super easy. Really super easy. Okay, great. I do meditate. I love guided meditations, though. Those are my favorite. Go ahead. Okay. Um, how I'll many 
What is your meditation practice? How many minutes a day or a week would you say you get in? I do about five minutes in the mornings. And then at night, I do about 15 minutes. Okay, so 20 minutes a day. So that is, that's where I want you to be. A hundred okay. minutes a week. I want you to track the amount of minutes that you meditate. So I want you to do a meditation chart. That's going to be like seven boxes across, eight boxes down. We're going to do an eight week meditation chart. So I want you to really meditate, meditate. I've got like a love signal by Rich Pendlebury, anything by Rich Pendlebury on my YouTube channel, on my Let's Meditate playlist is absolutely amazing. What's his last name? Pendlebury, P-E-N-D-L-E-B-U-R-Y. He makes music for my channel and he is absolutely incredible. Okay. And I've got a couple guided tracks that I've done. I've got, there's like a 20 minute guided one that people say they like. So you might want to try that. I love that. But yeah. So meditation, 140 minutes a week. I want to know how many minutes you did when we talk next time. And I want you to get a copy of No More Assholes. Yeah, I will. Yes. I think I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to order the book because I feel like it's going to be one where I'm going to have to highlight and reference back. You will be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other homework? No, that's it. So can I ask you a question? When I booked this session for 4 p.m., was it 9 p.m. your time? No, it was four. It was 3 p.m. my three. Oh. Three o'clock my time, four o'clock my time. I'm Eastern time. Are you oh, Eastern? Me too. For okay. some reason, when I booked it, it came up saying that it was going to be 9 p.m. No. On your time. And okay. I was like, shit, that sucks. Okay. Yeah. We're Thank good. you. Yay. Thank you so much. This really is more about me than it is about them. 100%. It's really more about me taking control of my life more, yes. which I've been doing little by little, but this is going to be a, this is going to be a good dive in. Yes. I'm so grateful. Mm. And, uh, I, I think I recorded this on my zoom. Yeah, oh. I did. So do you mind if I share clips on my TikTok account? As much as you want. And I'm going to refer everybody to you. As much as you want, my love, whatever you want to do, it's all yours. I really, uh, I'm going to get emotional. I really appreciate you just helping all of us. Mm. I really do more than anything, you're helping women find a voice and speak their truth and have standards, you know? And um, so many of us have been a victim of sexual assault and abuse and have really fucked up ways of thinking about relationships and stuff. And uh, I think because of all that abuse, we tend to not stand up and speak up for ourselves very much. So what you're doing with such class and beauty and grace, I'm just in awe. And I just bow down and I thank you. <laughs> I represent us. I represent us when we step into ourselves. I am I am nothing more than a representative of us and who we are fundamentally. You, you make women want to be better women. I need to know. And we're I appreciate it. Uh, and we're going to get amazing men. We will. Because the men, yes. the men, not the guys, the men are waiting. Yes. Yeah, and they will rise. Men will rise to the occasion. They're all and, here. They're here. They're waiting yeah. for us to rise. They're waiting yeah. for us to rise. They're waiting for us up here with their kindness, their generosity, their respect, their devotion, their loyalty, their work ethic. They already are fully formed. They're simply waiting for us to see them, acknowledge them, appreciate them. And be of service to them because they are so of service to us. They're paying that first date because their foot forward is service. 
Yeah. And we will pick them and we will be reciprocal and we will be in relationships where we are not tit for tatting service. We are generous with each other. My husband yeah. is so good to me. I'm running to keep up with him. My husband feels like I'm so good to him. He's running to keep up with me. That's what I'm talking about. This level of love and devotion and service. Yeah. To each other. We are so abundant in our generosity and care and attention. There's no scorekeeping, no tit for tat, just love. You speak some good truth right there. I love it. Let's bring it home. Yes. All right. Well, I'm not going to let you down. I'm going to do my homework and I'm really excited. So thank you. I'm excited too, my love. I'll see you in a week. Okay. Bye, honey. Bye, Holly. 